All right, in this video, we are going to look at solving uh, equations. Just before I start, nothing to do with solving equations, but isn't that a pretty picture? That's showing the MD Park in the, uh, in the distance there uh, along the Old Man River in Tabor. Okay, so solving equations. Here's a bunch of different types of equations, uh, but it doesn't matter what type of equation you have. At the end, you always want to get x is equal to something. And it turns out there's lots of different rules that you can use to solve them. In this video, we're going to look specifically at those two. Yeah, at those two and how we solve those. But uh, during the rest of the course, we'll look at uh, how we can solve um, basically all of those uh, equations. So the first kind of rules that we use with linear equations, and you can recognize them because there's only an x. There's not an x squared, it's just one letter. Um, and these rules are the addition or subtraction rule. So say I have this equation here, and my goal in the end is to get x is equal to something. So I want to get rid of this 5. So I can use something called the subtraction principle. So I'm going to subtract 5 here, because plus 5 minus 5 uh, gives me zero, and adding zero to anything doesn't change it. So that basically gets canceled out. But if I subtract five on this side of the equal sign, I also have to subtract five on that side. So x is equal to nine take away five is four. So that's the answer for that question. Always a good idea to check if you want. I won't check all of these, but I'll check some of them. Uh, so to check this answer, usually I write x plus five equals nine, the original equation. So here I'm checking. And then I substitute where x is, the number that I just got. So I got a 4. And then I see if the resulting expression or equation is equal to each other. 4 plus 5 is indeed 9. Therefore, it checks out, meaning that 4 is the answer. Let's try this question on the other side. Uh, 4 is equal to 5 minus x. Well, I want an x on the side by itself. I'm usually a left-handed x solver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add x to this side and add x to this side. I like having my x's on the left side. So that would leave me on the left side here with x plus 4 is equal to 5 because these would cancel out. Now same as I just did in the last question, I'm going to subtract 4 here, subtract 4 here. So these would cancel out leaving me with an x and then 5 take away 4 is 1. Going back to check to see if that's true, 4 is equal to 5 minus x. Notice I go back to the original equation. I don't use anything um, in between. So my x I came out to be in a 1, so that's why I plugged it in there. And 5 take away 1 is 4. 4 is equal to 4. That means 1 is my answer. So that's the addition subtraction principle. Next is the multiplication division principle. Again, I'm wanting to, in the end to have x equals something, so I have to get rid of anything that isn't an x on one of the sides. So here I've got an 8 in front of that x. I have to get rid of the 8. Since I'm multiplying by 8 here, to get rid of it, I can divide by 8. So I do the opposite operation. Dividing by 8 cancels those, leaving me with just an x on this side. But if I divide by an 8 on one side, I have to divide by an 8 on the other side. So my answer to this question would be 17 eighths. If I wanted to check my answer to see if it's correct, um, I could uh, write down my initial question and then plug in my answer. 17 over 8 equals 17. The 8s cancel. 17 is equal to 17. Therefore, my answer is right. Okay, going down to this uh, next question. This one, I've sort of included a bunch of ev everything in there. And so I'm going to have to collect like terms. I might have to use the addition subtraction principle, multiplication division principle, lots of them. First off, I see brackets. So I'm going to apply this negative sign to both things in the bracket. So it'll be 5x minus 2x plus 3 is equal to, I'm going to do the same thing here, apply that to both. So it'll be a negative 2x. And minus 2 times a minus 5 is a positive 10. Now, I'll collect like terms here on the left side. 5 take away 2 is 3. Plus 3 equals minus 2x plus 10. 
And then I want to get x's on the one side, I like them on the left, and numbers on the other side. So let us add 2x on this side, add 2x here. So these cancel out. So this will leave me with 5x plus 3 is equal to 10. Now let's move the 3 to the right side. So to do that, I'll subtract 3 here. I can do that as long as I do the same thing on the other side. These cancel, so I have 5x is equal to 7. And then finally, I'll divide both sides by 5. Divide this side by 5, this side by 5. So in the end, my answer comes out to 7 over 5. Again, I could, if I want, go back and check, and I could plug 7 fifths there, 7 fifths there, 7 fifths there, and see if one side is equal to the other side. Okay, uh, the next kind of principle that we're looking at is a zero products rule. And what that states is that if I have uh, the product of two or more things, and if that product comes out to be zero, then either x is a zero or a y is a zero. I basically have, will have two answers to that question. And it could be if I had another letter in front of that, like a P. So if I have three, either P is zero, X is zero, or Y is zero. So here I've got a case where I have two factors, X minus three times X plus two, and their product is equal to zero. If their product's equal to zero, that means that either X minus three is zero, or X plus two is zero. I guess I could say and because we are getting two answers for this question. Now I have a linear equation where I need to solve for x, so I'll add 3 to this side, add 3 to this side. I get x is equal to 3. Uh, and on the next one, I'll subtract 2 on both sides, so I get x is equal to negative 2. So my answers to this question are both x is 3 and x is a minus 2. Sometimes they'll give you this question like this one, but they'll give it to in this form, where you have to factor it first. Now, you can recognize it if it's a squared there, then it's a quadratic. So what you need to do is factor it so it looks like this top one. So let's try and factor this into two things. So uh, x here, x here. Things that multiply to 7, 14, add to 5. I'm thinking 7 and 2. And the 7 has to be negative and the 2 positive. Same question as the one above, so now either x plus 2 is 0 or x minus 7 is 0. So x here in this case, if I subtract 2 on both sides, I get a negative 2. If I add 7 on both sides, I get a 7. So two answers for that question are negative 2 and a positive 7. All right, the last type of uh, equation that we'll look at, uh, or way to solve an equation is a square root principle. And this one I can recognize, I can do this one, an easy way of doing this one, is if I have something that's squared, but then I just have another number, like four or something. Um, uh, and notice that I don't have a middle term, like if, if this was say three x minus four equals zero. Uh, this one here, I would not use the square root principle for. I would try and factor it. But if I'm missing that x term, like up here, there's no x term. Like over here, there's no b term or no n term. If I'm missing that, then I can use what they call the square root principle. Again, because it's a quadratic, I get two answers, but they're a little bit easier to get. What you do with these is you want to isolate the term that's squared. So the first thing I'll do here is I'll divide both sides by 2. So I'll get b squared is equal to 7. And then I use the square root rule. So I'm going to square root this side. And I can square root that side as long as I square root this side. Notice the square root of b squared cancels and I just come up with a b, which is what I'm wanting. But one thing caveat or one thing that you have to remember when you use a square root principle is you always have to come up with two answers. The way you get the two answers with the square root principle is that you have to put a plus or a minus in front of the square root sign. And so here b is going to be equal to a plus or a minus square root of 7. In other words, b is positive root 7 or b is a negative root 7. Okay, so two answers. Okay, next question uh, is a similar uh, kind of one, but it's not uh, written in the exact same form. So what I'll need to do first 
is to get it so I've isolated this piece here. So I'll go have 3n squared. I'm going to add 27 to both sides. So I'll get a positive 27 on this side. Again, I want to get rid of the 3, so I'll divide both sides by 3. So I'll get n squared is equal to uh, 27 divided by 3 is 9. And now I can use the square root principle. So I'll square root this side, square root this side. Remember my plus or minus. On this side, I just have an n. On this side, I have a plus or minus square root of 9. Oh, but the square root of 9 is 3, right? So n will be equal to a positive 3 and a negative 3. Just to finish off, let's check that one. So let's see if that's true. Here's the original equation. So I'm going to put a positive 3 in for n. 3 squared minus 27 is equal to 0. Notice I've got to do the um, uh, bedmas there here. So I have to do 3 squared first. So that's 9. And 3 times 9 is 27. And 27 minus 27, sure enough, is 0. So the 3 checks out. Let's see if the negative 3 checks out. So 3 times negative 3 squared minus 27 equals 0. Uh, negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. Oh, it looks like this one will check out too. 3 times 9 is 27. Subtract 27 gives you 0. So negative 3 checks out too. All right, hopefully that gives you uh, some help on solving those equations in this particular section. As I said earlier, we'll learn how to solve lots of different equations uh, during this uh, course.